Welcome back to GDPG. You Stole your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we're back playing more Final Fantasy 15 Platinum or the demo. It's a Platinum demo. Is it really a demo though? If it it's sort of is its own demo. standalone thing, because it's not like there's going to be feel, be a full release of Platinum. It could. I guess it could. Uh, it's really weird. They're doing a lot of things. All right, they're doing a movie. They're doing that mini anime series. The first episode's already out of that. Maybe they call it a demo so because it's maybe. free and like. Because they're a AAA company, they can't justify giving anything for free. Uh, maybe. I assume this was free, right? Yes, yes, it was so you for could everybody. Play that it wasn't today. even like with do Skyware. I had to buy another game to get the demo for it. Oh, okay. It, this was just straight up like anybody could do this. All right, cool. So I promised I'd show you what this could do. So, pow! Imagination. <laughs> uh, That's now, very like. I feel like this this car toy is a replica of like a car that was in Duskai or or will be in or the will full be. game. Um, it looks very like belongs mm, traveling off like dirt mm, road or like in sort of a desert because it's got like those tarps and stuff. Well the first thing Oh my uh oh <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> well can you get out and resummon it? Oh it just disappears. Yeah. <laughs> I think I can step back over it and become a car again. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the thing you can do. Oh, wait, but there's stuff right over here. So we're just, am I? It is good that they oh, let you resummon that because uh, it would be hilarious, right? If, like, you summon it once and that's all you get and right off the bat you lost it and it's like, well, guess we just got to hoof it. Hoof it? Hoof it? Hoof it. All right. Yeah, it keeps changing color. Does it really? Yep. Now it's green. It was red, then it was like steel color. Uh, uh, it's all gray. <laughs> Toy blocks. Nothing gets in my way. Super truck. Although while your truck, you can't get these glowing things that I obsessively collect for no reason. Cool. There's, so, there's uh, gotta be a reason. So what, is there a point to the truck? Uh, you actually do travel faster, uh, but that's the slowest vehicle. There are other vehicles. Oh, okay. So, uh, our little uh, Fennec Fox friend Carbunk over there wants us to go that way, which if you've ever played RPG, you means you know that means don't go that way. Yeah, because now you have the rest of the world to explore. Yup. <laughs> oh man, little boy's imagination. All right. And you were telling me, I think this was off camera, but you were telling me that most of the rest of the demo basically takes place in this room. Why are all these blocked? I must have forgotten to do something. Sorry, geese. Or, or you have maybe to it's more because of those... it's nighttime. Oh, that too. I was going to say, or you just have to collect more of those uh, gems. Mm, I mean, that, maybe. right now, that's like the only justification for those gems that I can think of, is that they unlock other things. Um, although, there, I guess there needs to be maybe? the justification of the day-night cycle, too. So if that also unlocks things, then that would make sense. I will say... Ooh, that low-res texture... They did oh, not yeah. expect you to go over here. <laughs> oh, no, they did. Well, yeah, I guess it's true, because the gems are over there. Yep. So, um... I'm going to step back over this, turn it back into night. Uh, and... Whoa! Whoa! Kingdom Heart style secret, man. No kidding! That's a well-placed secret. Yep. All right, cool. So, uh, let's show you what some magic looks like, huh? And let's go... Oh, yeah, we haven't done that yet. Gibblins. Yeah, <laughs> oh, they're nightmares. Yeah, because, you know, it's... Uh, I mean, from a game development perspective, uh, reusing assets from Deske is probably the most economical choice. It is. I'm sorry, I'm just laughing because of the hammer. Squeaky! <laughs> uh, although it's, like, really hard to hit these guys with it if you don't stun them with the sword first, which I, I guess is the point, because uh, naturally that just teaches you that you need to be able to switch up um, your weapon combos while like mm. while doing the, uh, while hitting. That's Otherwise, true. it's very hard to hit with a hammer, and I think that's just an inherent way of teaching the player how to do that. Very, very, very clever. Is there um, something behind that little sh staircase of books? Uh, they're totes is, but uh, I'm uh, I, I saw the trail. I'm gonna go this way first. Uh, and I think this leads to that area right I was just there. talking about. But first, yeah. what does this say? Repair written request. <laughs> Uh, I wonder if this is when it's talking about repairing the car from Dusky. Ooh, that would be interesting. They don't have a zoom in 
which really upsets me because there's a lot of things I keep looking at going like, oh. Well, they don't want you to zoom in. Well, first of all, the, the texture on that paper is, is low. So it's kind of blurry on purpose because they don't yeah. really want you to be able to read everything. Um, but if, if that is like the invoice for repairing the car, that actually is a good indication that this could be post Dusque. Mm-hmm. And, and if it, if that actually ends up being true, then I, I, I like I I'd appreciate that because it's like they're kind of like placing the seeds, right? Um, and that's smart, honestly. Can, that that makes it feel very intentional. Everything. Yeah, exactly. The, the, so far, their their narrative, whether maybe this is just me over speculating, but their narrative has been pretty solid for for things. Uh, if you fall, you go down to that previous area. That <laughs> okay. Just in, so so you know. And this is the area I was talking about where I was like, yeah, but you're totally supposed to go here. Are allowed to go there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, giant doors, stuff like that. I'm going to change the time again because it's I like I like this music a lot. I, oh, yeah, see, now you unlocked it. So and now maybe, I'm a bug. Maybe it is you collecting those gems because what else did you do that would have unlocked that? Oh, that's fair. Oh, now, see, there was a silver one over here. Now, the game design question to that is, do you think that they need to be showing more to tell you that, hey, this is the reward for unlocking these? Maybe at the very least, right? If we encounter these plates and it has the lock symbol, maybe when we step on it, it should be like, requires X amount of gems. Because we get that indicator at the top that says 122 gems, so we know how much <laughs> we have. Um, Sorry. But we <laughs> don't excited. really have any reason to care what that value is. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't let you know why you unlocked them or anything like that. There was that one moment where I was walking by and I was like, "Oh, it, I unlocked uh, the uh, bronze plates," but I didn't know why. Oh, I did, did it, it tell it's, you that? It did say that I unlocked okay. the bronze, but it, I didn't know that I unlocked the silver just now. Mm. So it was small enough that I just, just kind of went by. So yeah. these guys were also from. Uh, uh, Deuce guy as well. Oh yeah, I remember those guys. I suppose maybe the the bigger gems could be the things that actually do the unlocking, and maybe the uh, the little ones are just like that that like coin mechanic that just kind of leads the player. Um, but it sounded like you said that. Oh, I couldn't see anything, so <laughs> you know that happened. It sounded like you said though in your personal playthrough of this that you missed like one of them, and it's one of like, the big guys. Oh, one of the big ones. Yeah, okay. it was in a it was in a deceiving location. Do you think that they should be telling us what the total amount of gems there are in the world, so we so the player knows like, hey, I missed one. I'm gonna keep looking for it. Well, it really depends on if I actually expect to see those in the game or not. Because if I do expect to really see something like that in the game, then I hope they don't tell you. Because otherwise, there, there'd be a lot of information. Be like, there's so much in this area, and in this area. Yeah, I guess that would if if they did that right, then that would probably uh, encourage players to stick around in areas longer than they probably should be. Um, because generally, if you're going to have that kind of display, right, where you're saying, like, there are 100 gems in this area, mm -hmm. you generally want to separate it based on area rather than the total length of the game. Because yeah, otherwise, if you miss one... Ridiculous otherwise. Yeah, if you miss one, you could actually end up looking for it forever and not realize, oh, that was in the last area that I can no longer return to. Yep. I have a Radiant Sword now. Ooh. Um, see that little spot right there? So I'm just going to replace the toy sword because it is the toy sword, just better. Um, mm, okay. And I want to put, like, so far they're since, they, they've done a really good job with the sense of discovery, which um, was something I felt was lacking in 13 because that, the 13 felt linear, right? But yeah. um, it reminds me of those old Final Fantasies. Like, uh, 7 was actually particularly good about its sense of discovery. Um, I was pretty good of, at it too. Ten was ten was actually a, a masterpiece when it came to that knocking stuff over. <laughs> Can I, just, you... I just want that. I just want that one. Uh, that's that's all I want. Is it possible to knock things over so that you couldn't get that gem? It's possible. <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, I'm pretty sure I grabbed that without needing the blocks before, but maybe I was just. Ah, oh, there you got go. it. Okay. So uh, yeah, ten was amazing at it, and so they've really gone back to that sense of, a sense of dis uh, discovery and really re rewarding its players for just screwing around and seeing what else is out there, um, which is good because you want your players to want to know more about your world. So when you mm -hmm. jump over that, you're like, cool, of course I'm gonna go over this, and then and then when you look down, bam, there it is. Uh, so it, can you knock it, that card down. 
No, I tried. You just stand on it. It's oh, weird. weird. It's awkward. <laughs> Physics. <laughs> Wood blocks, not a problem. Card? <laughs> You're not at that level yet. <laughs> Card strategically placed by the level designers, mind you. <laughs> What was I going to say? Oh, so on the note of discovery then, do you think that maybe 13 was sort of an experiment? Where they were like, how much do players really care about discovery? Or is it more about the, like, the character personalities and the the beautiful art? Because it was a pretty game. I'll give them at least that much. It was. Right? No matter how much I hated 13, it still was stunning to look at. Um, uh, yeah, and there's, and there's not really a whole lot of argument that can be made against that, to be mm -hmm. honest. They did... If that was what they were aiming for, they hit it spot on. Yeah, I, I would say down. arguably that's like half of the point of that game. <laughs> it's just the stunning scenery and, and art. Uh, but yeah, I, I wonder if that, if Final Fantasy XIII was sort of a test to, to like kind of feel out the waters to see what their fans actually prefer. Um, and maybe part of that was like them trying to decide where are we going to blow our next gigantic budget? <laughs> is it going to be on a huge MMO? Is it going to be on like a visually stunning game? Or is it going to be on one that's based on exploration and character depth of character? And I feel, uh, so far from what I've experienced with, with 15, I feel like the answer is all of them. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe that was also them just like building up their skill set over each generation of Final be, Fantasy. Because they've really gone freaking out of their way for a lot of things uh like their marketing for this game has been just li literally unlike anything else uh, that it's, i've uh, experienced it's true it, it, it's one of the biggest marketing campaigns i think i've seen in a very long time because who else what other like triple a developer in their right mind would make an anime a a 3d animated series at least two demos that have standalone stories yeah it's ambitious. And it a is, full game. It is risky, and that is not something that a lot of AAA industries will do. Like, and, uh, I would expect gotta, that from Nintendo. You gotta for that. Yeah, I'd, I'd expect that from Nintendo more than anyone else, and even they haven't done that. <laughs> not to that degree. I mean, not, like, not at least all in one campaign. They'll, they'll do that with, like, specific IPs that they didn't necessarily create, like Pokemon. Um, because they didn't create Pokemon. They just, like, owned it and then just used Went with the it. Got, yeah. used, sorry, didn't mean to cuss. Used the crap out of it. <laughs> Trying to do better about my Potty cussing. mouth. Yeah. Man. Um, but, yeah. It's it's smart. I'm, I, it's, it's exciting, too. I'm, I think that's part of why, like, this marketing campaign is working on me, is because it seems like they care so much about making this successful that I'm, oh. I'm hoping that it means that they're actually spending the time and care to like build a game that's actually going to be awesome. And the demo is like, they kind of say that so far. Because after so many games of being disappointed with the Final Fantasy series, like the demos have at least yeah. convinced me that these this next one is going to be pretty good. It, I mean, really, so far they, I, I have been very impressed with it, and I, I wasn't super happy with with 13. I didn't play 11 or 14 because I'm not into MMOs, but mm. I've heard that it had a huge cult following for what it's worth, and that's good. Yeah. I'm, I, so I can't, I like, I'm not hating on those games at all, but uh, yeah, but those, I, the the critical, or our, like our critique of it is mostly based on how successful the MMOs were, because I, I never played them either. I actually wanted to. Um, but I can't dedicate time to an MMO. <laughs> Why would you? We got a show to run here. <laughs> got stuff to do. <laughs> well, anyway, that's all we have for this episode. Uh, we're gonna continue playing this game in the next one. I don't go up the fort. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah. Um. We're we're almost done with this area too. Um. Maybe maybe I'll, we'll collect some of the rest of these gems off cam and then and just get over with it because I think this is actually the last like secret little area. <laughs> Okay. Until we get up there. So question, on the table. question of the day. Um, I'm gonna ask about maybe what you think. Um, I don't know. Should we ask like what the f what you think the focus of Final Fantasy 15 is? I mean, does it seem like it is based on character depth and exploration, or do you think it is kind of um, all over the the spectrum, like a an, an amalgamation of all the the games that 
Square Enix has been working on since the past, like, decade. I think a piggyback to that question, too, is there any aspect of development, not only just design, but it de development in general, that you wish that they would concentrate more on, mm. that maybe they used to concentrate back on the day, or maybe that they've always not been strong with, like... The stories have always been a little hokey. Do you wish, you know, it wasn't the case so much so or whatever? Uh, what, you know? Yeah, we'll, we'll make that the actual question of the day. Feel free to answer my question too, but that'll be what's in the comment section. So, we'd love to see your comments in the comment section in response to the question of the day. The question of the day will be there too. I just repeated myself like three times, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank we'll, you for watching. We'll see you later. We'll see I'm, you. I'm driving a bug. Even look like he's in there. It's because he's it, not. He, he literally the turned car. into a car. <laughs> That's why I said a boy's imagination because he's the car. Perfect. Bye, everyone. See you later.